Hey, what's up guys? So this is actually going to be my last video here in the Total War Kingdom Battle series. I'm going to go over tips, tricks, and cheats that I've possibly have learned. I am by no means an expert in this game. I've played it for about 15 days, roughly every day, uh, for a few hours here and there. So these are just the things I've learned. And this is also in um, like open beta. So things are subject to change. One of the big things is you have farms and you have materials here. When you go ahead and you gather and you harvest things, you can either harvest one or you can harvest all. After you harvest one, you can harvest all. If you harvest all, you can't harvest anything else because they're all being harvested. The harvest one takes 20 minutes, so it's a fairly short duration. When you harvest all, it takes like eight hours. It's a huge, huge time to harvest everything. And when you harvest all, the things, they regenerate a lot slower. So you typically, if you're going to be playing this, and it is going to be a cross-platform, multi-device uh, multi game. So like you're going to be able to play on your, your iPhone or your Android device and then jump on your computer at home. You are going to want to be constantly checking it and constantly grabbing and harvesting everything. Because when you harvest just one, this will regenerate in like two hours. Whereas when you harvest all, it will take a day to regenerate. That goes to the next thing, is that when you have farms like this, you want to have them surrounded by water, or at least touching the water, so they gain some regeneration bonuses. That is huge. You'll notice that we have a farm over here, and this, I haven't played the game for like three days, and it's still trying to grow crops. So it's taking forever to grow crops because there's no water to the crops. So it logically makes sense. In the beginning of the game, you're really, really limited on food. You want to get to the ocean as soon as possible so you can set up a fishing harbor. This right here, you'll have to have fish in the in the ocean or in the pond, in the lake. Um, when you do, you'll want to fish. Fish gives you 40 food. It's a decent amount of food. It's a um, higher yielding food source than the farms. So fishing is really, really good. You can see fishing is these little sparkles right here. And to fish, we have a harbor way over here, and it just sends out our fishermen's boats to collect those fish. The harbors are connected to, as, as long as it's connected by water, you can send out the boat. You see we sent out a boat from down there, and we sent out a boat from up there. And they're going to go ahead and do their thing and collect the fish. As you get further in the game you start to run out of this material, silver. In the beginning of the game, you're going to have a surplus of silver. Silver comes from blacksmiths. As you can see here, they mine. It takes several hours, depending on how many workers that you put in there. You get workers and builders and craftsmen from these houses and homes. In the beginning of the game, they start you off with a lot of workers that are free, and you have no idea what the heck to do with them. So you're just like, oh, okay, I'll put these guys in here. As time goes on, they end up retiring from work. So this guy has 24 hours left to finish his life cycle of working in the blacksmith. And in 8 minutes, we're going to get some silver out of that. These guys right here, they have 15 hours left. So once they retire, they're dead, pretty much. You know, they're tired, you're not getting any more work out of them, you have to generate more people. So you're going to be having a constant struggle of... Having houses, six hours to wait to get a person. You have your peasants, which are very, very basic. And then you have your more advanced craftsmen that are more efficient and faster at doing things. So, of course, you want to try and have these in here. These craftsmen, because, again, they speed up the process. But peasants work just as fine, just a little bit slower. You can convert the peasants 10 to 1 at your capital castle. Train peasants 10 to 1. So it's a very, very steep ratio. You can also find random generated things like this. So this is boulders. This is stone. You can click on it and you gather. And it'll take a few seconds or a few minutes. And you can gather and you'll gain a nice amount of material. So there's a whole total quantity of 120 stone right there. You'll be able to gather, like, say, 20 or 40 every 10 minutes, and that will add to your stone collection. You can get gems in-game via daily quest, daily capital 
reward quest as you saw in the beginning of this video we got five gold there you can also find gems when you actually evacuate evacuate uh, i have no idea how to say that uh, i apologize so you do that and this could potentially become a gold mine unfortunately since it's close it's all terrain based this is actually going to dig and when they dig they're going to pull the dirt out and this is going to flood so that's going to be a bad demonstration you're not going to find gold there because it's going to flood You'll have people that will be invading you. Raiders typically will come in like this. They have different difficulties. And they're going to try and destroy your villages. And you see this is on fire. Under siege. So if they're successful in 7 hours. In 2 minutes. If you don't defeat them. They'll destroy your village. Your mansion. And they'll keep moving forward until they get to your castle. They're attempting to steal from your castle. And steal a ton of resources. So you do have to try and attack them. Your troops, they're called orders. So actually you can have three specialty orders. I believe the game starts you off with two. So you're going to want to unlock the third church and to set up a third order. So these are specialty buffs for your units when in combat. You can swap them in and out, change them whenever you want. And you can see more become unlockable as you have more churches. Your units will gain EXP as well, and you can upgrade them. So they'll gain EXP. This one has 81 units, right? 81 EXP unit uh, experience points right here. We can either upgrade the rank to level two, that requires 250 EXP. So we don't have enough. We could upgrade the skill point here, so make him just a little bit stronger, and that will cost 20. As we upgrade it, it keeps increasing. You can also give them specialty skills. So these are very, very important. You probably want to get to these right away. So save up to 200 XP and get them their specialty skills. So this one returns eight soldiers to the unit. This one protects all, protects from all charge and melee attacks for 20 seconds. So pretty impressive. Pretty much almost a mini invincibility for 20 seconds right there. These are one-time use in battles. You can also equip and buy with gold upgradable things better spears better armor specialty purchases crafting that stuff costs a lot of silver as you can see there this is why towards the middle of the game you're going to need a ton of blacksmiths and ton of silver you're going to be running out of silver during the middle of the game the beginning of the game, you're going to have a surplus of the stuff. You're going to be like, eh, every single fight generates you silver. You also need specialty crafting materials right here. And that's very, very important. So if you're not a paying player, you're going to have to go ahead and make these sheep farms. And then shear the sheep. When you shear the sheep, you get the specialty crafting materials that are required to craft those armors, weapons, gear that you would normally have to purchase with real life money, with the gems. Gems, there's a cool thing in this game. Um, it is on Steam, and if you have people on your friends list buy gems, there's a chance that they actually will give you a nice little bonus gift. So fill up your friends list with people that play this game, because you might actually get a nice kind of like referral bonus. For the attacks, you're going to get times 3 EXP, after you've logged off for a couple days. As you can see the attacks here. They always give rewards. You always want to win the battle. So you can get the rewards obviously. Uh, fight easier fights. And you can just farm. You can also change the mission over here. So if you don't like those rewards. You can change it. Unfortunately it went to a brutal status. So we definitely cannot fight that one. We don't want to do it. You can see ranking of the units right here. You don't really want to fight 3 star units. That means they're level 3. And they're extremely powerful. So this right here, level 1 units, easy. You're going to get 70 silver, small amount, but you can clear that out with little to no difficulty. And so if you want a specific type of food or material, just change the mission and potentially you'll get it. You're always going to get silver. You're also going to be able to purchase a market. The market really serves little value in the beginning of the game because um, you could exchange currencies but you exchange it at like a four to one ratio as you get a lot more markets the ratio gets a little bit better 
So you can see now we're at about a three to one ratio. And you're probably going to be trading uh, logs and lumber for other materials. And you see you click on this, you go up, you get a lot of logs and lumber and they always regenerate back as long as there's one tree left. Those are all the tips and tricks that I've learned so far. Uh, for attacking tricks, you have a couple different things. The duel is the PvP, which really wasn't enabled uh, or many players doing it during the beta, so I can't really tell you about that. The battle quests were harder missions, but they gave out some better rewards. And you want to set up your units. This is critical. You want to click on each of the units and click on upgrade and then read this little tidbit right here, the information, and find out what they're strong against. They don't really give you a great guide on who's strong against who. But this right here, the swordman, it says it's greatly effective against spearmen and lightly armored foes. So if you're planning to attack a group that has a lot of spearmen, you're going to want to put these guys up in front first row so they can charge and pretty much decimate that group with no issues at all. Cavalry again you go over to upgrade take a look at what it says it says be wary of spearmen so you don't want to have them up front if you're fighting spearmen they're good against footmen so archers So that's how you kind of figure out who is good against who. Let's so go ahead and do a random fight here to demonstrate. You can swap units, swap positions in battle, and it's kind of important. There's also battle skills here that these cost gems or gold. So real life money currency if you're stuck on a mission. Again, you will be able to gain a small amount of currency in game. And so if you click a unit and you want to swap it, you click this foot icon, and now you'll be able to swap it with units. So we're going to swap it with these guys, and you'll see there's a cooldown on that, and now we have a unit in front. The opponents will also swap and counter up your techniques. You have your skills over here. Make sure that you utilize them. We have mortars and ranged abilities. This is also the charge. This is extremely important. Get used to timing this stuff. Because if you can get perfects, you can do a massive amount of damage and pretty much kill a unit just with a charge. These cooldowns, they come down fairly quickly. As you can see, our mortars and ballistics are already ready to go. You have to actually click, and they are sensitive to where you click. You'll see that there's a flag symbol right there. That means we got attacked by a special. We have a special on that unit right there. So the opponents will use specials on you as well. This guy threw a bunch of bees at us, caused havoc. Again, work on the charging. That is probably the most important part of the battles. And then also try and learn the strengths and weaknesses of the units. So if you have any questions, uh, please post comments down below. If you have any other feedback and want to help out, again, post comments, post your tips, tricks, and cheats. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow me with the other games. Unfortunately, I have too many games to play, and this one just didn't keep my interest uh, enough to you know, keep going with it. But overall, it is a fun game, and I do recommend you give it a try uh, if you like this style of game. 